Honourable Members, the House must now proceed to choose a Speaker. Are there nominations? Madam Clerk, I nominate Dr. The Right Honourable Lockwood Smith for the office of Speaker. I second the nomination of Dr. The Right Honourable Alexander Lockwood Smith for the office of Speaker. Are there any further members wishing to nominate others for election as Speaker? There being no further nominations, Dr. The Right Honourable Lockwood Smith is declared elected. My colleagues, uh, I am deeply honoured that you have elected me to be your speaker for a second time. And I want to particularly thank those of you who are in the last parliament for the extraordinary courtesy that you extended me. To you goes great credit for the better natured tone and the effectiveness of that last parliament. For the speaker, it's not always easy telling senior colleagues on either side of the house uh, to desist or resume their seat when they're in full flight delivering some telling political point that happens to be just out of order. But to me, the standard was set by a speaker at the House of Commons at Westminster there many, many years ago, when in 1642, Charles I forced his way in and demanded that the speaker assist him in locating some senior members of parliament that he wanted to arrest. Speaker William Lenthal not only bade the King desist, but sent him packing with the immortal words, May it please your majesty, I have neither eyes to see nor tongue to speak in this place, but as this house is pleased to direct me, whose servant I am here. And to me that's the, the key, that as Speaker, I'm the servant of this house, if you like, I'm Parliament's person. I won't always get things right, but I'll do my utmost to be impartial and fair. As before, I today commit to upholding the rights and privileges of this House for all its members and to strengthening the effectiveness of this Parliament for those we represent. As Speaker-elect, I will at two o'clock comply with the request and go to the Governor-General to seek his confirmation and to lay claim on your behalf to the rights and privileges of this House. Again, I, I thank you all. The right honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, uh, on behalf of this House, can I be the first member to offer you uh, my congratulations and the congratulations of all members of this House. You came into this Parliament in 1984 and in that time you've represented the people of Rodney very well. You've been an outstanding member of Parliament and a minister in previous governments. And I think in that time you've shown New Zealanders uh, that you are a person uh, with good judgment, of great wisdom, uh, someone with courage to fight for the causes that you believe in and to represent this parliament and the people of New Zealand extremely well. In the 49th parliament you were elected the Speaker of this House and in that time you proved uh, that you would be a person of great impartiality that you would restore the respect to the New Zealand Parliament and I believe that uh, you served uh, this House with great distinction and represented us with great pride. So can I take this opportunity to congratulate you on your election in the 50th Parliament uh, to wish you all the very best for the challenges that lie ahead. Uh, we are, of course, uh, the recipients of the Rugby World Cup, and so at that great moment can I take this opportunity to throw in the analogy 
that the Speaker of the House is somewhat like a good rugby referee. We saw in the final uh, between the All Blacks and France, Craig Joubert using his great judgment uh, not to blow up the game too often, to allow the free flow of the sport and to not award the penalty in the last nine minutes, uh, which I can honestly describe as being the worst nine minutes of my life. <laughs> Mr Speaker, we wish you all the very best for your time uh, ahead and uh, we wish you, of course, all the very best for a very Merry Christmas uh, and a Happy New Year. The Leader of the Opposition. Uh, Mr Speaker-elect, on behalf of the Labour Party, can I also extend my congratulations and our congratulations to you on this position. Welcome you back again into the, into the role that you conducted yourself with so well um, in, the, in the last term. As you said, being fair and impartial, and impartial is, the, uh, is the, the most important thing, and you showed that in your, in your last uh, term, and we very much appreciated that. Um, I, I think we appreciated also the way that you, when, we, when a question was considered and a tight question was, was, was asked, how you insisted on the other side, the, the ministers actually giving a proper answer, and I hope that uh, will continue. I also want to acknowledge the, uh, the management that you showed to the shadow leader of the House, uh, and, uh, and I might come and uh, meet with you and get some, some advice on, uh, on how I can do that better as well. But once again, from the, uh, from the Labour Party, congratulations and thank you very much. Matilda Toure. Uh, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Green Party, I want to congratulate you for your re-election, re surprise as it was. Uh, <laughs> And to say we do also look forward to working with you further in the future. Uh, you and I have not always agreed on all issues to do with the management of the House and Parliament, but where we have, we have worked together and achieved a great deal. And I want to acknowledge particularly your reform for transparency that you were part of as part of the last term as Speaker. And I certainly look forward, and the Green Party does too, to your continuing work to reform the parliamentary process, to make it more transparent, uh, to recognise and respect our history, to honour and respect the Treaty of Waitangi, and to reform towards a state of modernisation that perhaps better reflects the 21st century modern progressive nation that Aotearoa New Zealand has become. I look forward to working with you closer on those issues in the future. Congratulations, Mr Speaker. Barbara Stewart. Thank you, Mr Speaker. On behalf of New Zealand First, I'd like to congratulate you on your role and reluctantly accepting it, and to tell you that we look forward to working with you in the future. We know that you honour and respect Parliament, and we will be doing the same. Thank you. The Honourable Dr Peter Sharples. I join the other members, uh, leaders of the parties, uh, on behalf of Mrs. Tariana Tudio, myself, and the party, to congratulate you once again. I think you, uh, your uh, acknowledgement of Maori pronunciation and things Maori in this house uh, and getting the translation automatic uh, have been wonderful. So, kia ora. Thank you. Hone Hardware. Ah, Hueno, a quarter of Tata, you may make here to Kiakwe, the Kaihoa to Tata and Efarete later. Taito Kuana, in Amehikatuako, Chukuna to Kirungiakwe, met the Merno Hoki, ah, Taitoko, and the Hoki, the Kororo, or material, Kia, Nohotai Tata, Ato Nawaki, a Kororo in a Kororo, Motetahi Oachi, Pai, a Pana Kiata, Oroto, Aote, Aroite, Newa. Uh, congratulations, Mr. Speaker, for taking on that most onerous of tasks, trying to keep that side and this side acting in the best spirit of the House. Um, and to say I look forward to the opportunity to sit down with you and others in the very near future to talk about the way in which we might advance the notion that the oath better reflect who it is we are in Aotearoa, our treaty, and the people that we represent. The Honourable John Banks. The Act Caucus. Uh, can, I, uh, <laughs> can I congratulate you on your reappointment? We've known each other a long time, and um, 
I'm very grateful uh, for that. Uh, your mother and father would be very proud of you today, Dr Smith, uh, in this uh, exalted role that you have done so well and served the country so well. You have brought a lot of grace and uh, dignity uh, to the role of Speaker and uh, to this place uh, for which the whole country is grateful. Uh, while in exile, I got a lot of opportunity to uh, witness this place in action, uh, and you've done a remarkably well job. Finally, can I thank you for the enthusiastic uh, welcome that you gave me uh, when I arrived back here this morning. It was only surpassed by a security guard on day one when I arrived here two weeks and two days ago when he said, it's so good to see you again, Winston. <laughs> The Honourable Peter Dunn. Uh, Mr Speaker, as one of the uh, now dwindling band of fellow 1984 intake members, can I congratulate you most warmly on your re-election to the most elevated post in this Parliament. Uh, you showed, sir, in your first term that you were prepared to take on the challenge of treading the very fine line between upholding the standards, dignity, tradition and history of this place and starting to modernise and make more transparent and open many of the processes uh, by which we operate. Uh, you succeeded admirably in that task and I think that for those who doubted your resolve, your determination and your dedication, you also showed very quickly that you were not going to be trifled with in that score and I think most members of the House would acknowledge the huge contrib contribution that you made in that respect. Now, Mr Speaker, a new parliament has been elected and with it come new challenges. The composition of the House has changed somewhat and those of us who are familiar with your ways will no doubt slip comfortably back into cooperating with you and acknowledging you as appropriate. There will be others who will have to be guided and educated. And I'm sure, sir, that we um, who have been here for some time will stand by ready to assist you in that process but I suspect our assistance will be superfluous because your ability to win the confidence of the House to impose a standard of order and conduct that befits this place was well established in the last term. And, sir, like the House unanimously, I have confidence uh, that you will continue to impose that same standard and uh, that same level of performance during the coming term. My warmest congratulations. Thanks very much. My colleagues, thank you. thank you so much for those very kind comments and for the confidence you've shown in me. I just hope that I can live up to that confidence you've displayed, you've shown in me today. The House stands adjourned until 11am on Wednesday 21 December 2011.